Well, Johnny, so we get on the video. Can you hear staff? And staff can hear us. Not when we're inside. Yeah, we can't hear Sam. Okay. I can hear. Can hear Sam. But it should still report on that. Okay. See the owls still picking up the sound. It's going on the right. Okay, we're ready. So I'd like to call the meeting to order. And uh, Carolyn, would you please read roll call? Welsh. Here. Morgan. Dan Anderson. Here. Houston. Here. Williams. Here. Hawk. Here. Mike Anderson. Here. We do have a quorum. Okay. We'd like to stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. Kelly, would you please read? Lee. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, do we have any order of business for emergencies, Carolyn? Yes. Okay. And we have Stan in, on attendance in Zoom, correct? Correct. Okay, so moving forward, if uh, I would... Entertain a motion for approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve the agenda. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. And that brings us to the police report. Evening. Uh, our October report, we had two arrests. Um, they were both for assault. One of those assault arrests occurred at the Travel Lodge, and the other one occurred at the Super 8. So those are our two arrests for the month of October. Everything else is pretty good. Questions for me regarding the report or anything else? Um, I heard in the news one evening that one of our deputies were recognized. Could you share that with us? Oh, Chris Lindquist? Yes. Yeah, he's been recognized on several occasions for his heroic actions on the night of the fire. When he, he and another citizen pulled a gentleman out of the apartment room up there. And I'll tell you, I watched the body cam video for that. And it was pretty impressive. So, yeah, Chris Lindquist. Okay. Well, so, if we see him, never see that title of schools, could we? You know, maybe if the sheriff decided to release it or something, I, mean, I can't show it to you guys, but possibly someday. I don't know. I could maybe look into seeing if they could do that. Anyway. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Well, we just wanted everyone to know that he had been recognized and yes. and we appreciate it deep. We're very grateful for yep. what he did. We're lucky to have him here for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So okay. Uh any other questions or concerns about the sheriff's report today? Okay. All right. Thanks. Have a great night. Thank you. you. Thank you. Travel safe. Thank you. Okay, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda, which would be the minutes and the claims and the budget report, uh, water usage, sales tax, and on-call schedule, employee overtime and sick vacation request. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. <clears throat> Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, that brings us to 
a visitor request, an agenda request, please. Hello, everybody. Um, first off, I want to say thank you for the way you guys have helped with the rest. But I have a I have a, a, a question on a comment that was made two meetings ago on on Hillcrest in this in this witness committee here. There was a comment made that the, the the city council has been over backwards for Hillcrest, and I'm. I'm I'm looking for an explanation on that because I'm wondering what is it the city council has done for Hillcrest that they haven't done for everybody else in the community? I don't think that term was used, Lee. Oh, it was used. Bend over backwards. If you've been over backwards to help Hillcrest, yes, it was said. And I'm wondering, I'm just wondering, I, I know we've put in a curb stop at Hillcrest and the city, the city has done that for multiple other properties in Hillcrest. The city has allowed us to dump it, the landfill, which they've done for multiple other building sites in, in the city of Wall. We had two water leaks in Hillcrest, which Garrett and his team came out and fixed, which we paid for. Um, the, the planning and zoning part of it, I'm, I'm just wondering what, and I know things were a little heated in here, but, but I'm just wondering. Well, I, I, I think that, you know, the city's all been, always been, well, I, I personally have been really excited that you and Mandy uh, purchased Hillcrest. And... I, I know. And I, I, and I, like I said, I'm very grateful for what the city has done to help with the, along with Hillcrest. But when you made that comment, I'm sitting here going, if I miss something, I don't, I don't think you missed anything. Maybe. Okay, well, I'm just, I'm just, because it, it puts an image out there that I'm asking for a handout at Hillcrest, and I'm not, you know, I'm not. Well, that, that wasn't a thought in my head. I, I, I didn't think we did anything inappropriate, but I know personally, I was uh, very excited that you purchased Hillcrest, uh, you and your family, and that you were, Making and that's okay. to improve yeah. it, I, I think it's you know a valuable property that's kind of sat there, you know, for a few years and not been really going anyplace. Okay, I just I was just looking for clarification on that. If there was something that, if there was an underlying something sitting there that I'm not aware of, because I don't I don't want there to be. Well, I'm not aware of it. Okay, all right. So yeah. that that was one. Any nobody got anything? Okay. That was one question I had on Hillcrest. The other question is, I'm just looking for an update as to where we are with Loves now. You know, we, we, we don't have any new information at this time. So, there, so, there, so there's nothing going on that the community needs to know about. Well, we're not uh, really at liberty. Uh, we, we don't have any anything that we can update the public with. This is a process, and we just don't have any new information. What? And I might share with you, Lee, because you weren't here at the last meeting. Yeah. And then we had technology issues, and we didn't get the video out until just three or four days ago. Or... Oh, okay. It's not out there. Okay, because I looked for it to watch it to okay. see what, so what I missed. Me. YouTube, YouTube is telling me that it's too long a video to get on there, and that's... Okay, not, not the case. Because we've had longer meetings. Yeah. I don't know what the deal is. Okay. So we'll try it one more time because I did happen to keep my notes from last time. And the attorney was here, so she heard what I said, and I won't add anything more. Well, I'm not asking add. you to beat a dead horse. I'm just, just wondering if there's, and, and I'm just, all I'm looking for is transparency with the community as to what's going on. I think as you're spending the community's dollars fighting this, transparency is. It's it it's you you guys are entrusted to spend our money as as council members. And I'm wondering how do we how so we have a budget for you guys went over a budget, correct? You, you guys have got your new budget and the budget numbers are what they are, but we've gone over budget obviously on legal fees and everything that's gone on. I mean, I would sure think if I like when I look at an old budget and we're at a hundred thousand dollars we spent on legal fees and we did have twenty thousand dollars or did. 
budget of the year, how do we pay those legal expenses? Because they're never talked about in a city council meeting. We, we talk about approving expenditures for all kinds of other things in the meetings, whether it be building or, or you know, road infrastructure or whatever, but we never talk about what we're spending on legal counsel in this setting. And I'm just wondering, because it is the community's money, they have the right to know what's going in and how and where their dollars are being spent. And, I, and that I don't think would encroach on uh, attorney-client privilege. Maybe it does, but those dollars that are spent are the public's dollars, they're not your dollars to spend without explaining where they go. Does well, that seem instance, fair? Um, she gives us a budget report every month, expense report, and like we budgeted, or there was $40,000 budgeted for this year, and we're at like 44000 so we're a bit over, and we've got a bit more of the year to go. That's public information, it's in every um, you can find it on the website. Okay. So that's an example of where we're at. So we don't actually approve overages at the city council meeting on things, I guess. So well, in this, at this meeting, there is um, an item that's called the supplemental ordinance. Okay. And rather than doing it at every meeting, because ordinances have to be published, most communities wait until towards the end of the year. Okay. Because we don't have to report I don't know how to, if I can explain this. Um, those have been, well, no. Have you signed it over there, Kelly? Yeah, I asked about oh, this. Coming around. Is this what you wrote? Yeah. Or the supplement? No, that. Can you hand that to us, please? So, in there is, I thought a copy of it over there. So, there's funds and then there's line items in each fund. Yep. And so as long as the fund, the bottom dollar of the fund is not overspent, we don't have to cite the money. So I can overspend, a, or not I. <laughs> um, a line item can get overspent, but as long as we would still have money in another line item to cover that, it doesn't have to be supplemented. It's only if the bottom dollar gets overspent, no, that's the overall city budget gets overspent. Well, each fund. So there's several departments in the general fund. So okay. Speak. And at any point in time, if you want to come in and I can explain this, okay. I mean, yeah. I, I don't have a problem with that. But um, so there is uh, an ordinance that will, which will be the first reading tonight, and it's called the Supplemental um, Budget of 2022. Um, there might be a little more tweaking after next meeting, but I have to get that in the paper and public, published before the end of the year. Okay. So I sometimes tend to cushion a little bit just so that if an unexpected expense comes in, I have enough money to play with that. If we don't need that extra money put in there, it just doesn't go anywhere, you know. So, okay. And, but, and I'm just, I guess where I'm going with this is if there was, if there was more transparency, I'd have less questions. And I assure you, I'm not the only one with questions. I, I assure you that I am not the only one. I'm just the only one that's got the audacity to come up here and ask the questions. So uh, if you guys would be more transparent with what's going on, people, I think people would understand a little more of what's going on because they are, they are concerned. We're, we're, con we're concerned too, but, but we do have um, attorney, attorney client privilege. And, I, and, and, I, and, and we're being sued, Lee. The city's yeah, being sued. Absolutely. I and so I we're just trying to defend ourselves. I, I understand that, but we are the city. The people that live here are the city. It's not just you guys up here. We are the city. The people that live here, the people that pay taxes here, we are the city. You are entrusted to to manage our city and spend our dollars but we are the city and i so i understand certain things can't be communicated but there's how many months has it been since anybody has talked up here about bugs the lawsuit didn't go away i mean my understanding on what i hear it's gotten worse because we're sitting at judgment day is coming and a lot of the <clears throat> time, because it has been a long time, but a lot of that was the judges 
take her time writing that. Correct. All I'm saying, Kelly, is once a month, give an update as to where we're at. That's, 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 I, well, I, I realize that, but that's as simple as saying, hey, you know, tonight we're going to, the city council is going to put this lawsuit on the agenda and we're going to talk about, hey, this is where we're at. You know, instead of on November 24th, when the ruling comes out and we pay X amount of dollars or however that that happens, all of a sudden it's not just a surprise to the community as to what, what's going on. Because if we end up having to pay a pile of money out, people are going to find out. It's not, it's not all of a sudden attorney client privilege anymore. So I, I'm just saying some transparency. I mean, well, we hear it in government everywhere, and there's no transparency going on with the community here as to what's going on. And it's, you know, part of being fiscally responsible is because you're you're entrusted to be fiscally responsible and planning. So I just I'm not asking for much, just a just a little a simple update, and then I say in the seat back here. So, but it, anyways, that's, I'm not going to be the dead horse, and I, I do appreciate everything you guys do for the city, and and uh, I just looking for information, I guess, and I'm not the only one. So, so right now we're waiting for the hearing, right? We are at that point because um, the judge asked the hearing be set, that Loves was supposed to submit their daily loss of financial benefits since August 12th of 2021, which is 448 days to the day, and uh, that Loves submit their attorney fees and their costs. Loves also asked for a stipulation um, that their, uh, their expenses on a daily basis not uh, be put on record. They wanted that uh, contained. Our attorneys were also supposed to file what's called objections to the facts of conclusion of law by September 23rd, and our attorneys did do that. And none of these costs, because we don't, we don't know what these expected costs might be, are in the budget that we're going to talk about no. tonight. Because we don't be. know that yeah. yet. So that's kind of where the the process is uh, that we're working through. No, uh, the issues are one is contempt and the other one is that we did not follow South Dakota Codified Law 6117. That's the bottom of the whole script of the whole issue. So Mary, I, I missed the last meeting. I apologize for that. I was out of work. But do, do we have insurance that will help cover any of these costs if we... We had uh, $25,000 worth of insurance. We were notified in February that all of those uh, dollars are gone. And no, so it will be we, have not, we have not discovered any other okay. uh, options of insurance. Okay. So it, it will, uh, it's serious. Fair enough. That's, that's all I had. That's so if I could just add another yes. comment, just because this affects me. And, um, so the bill list that they approve of what we're paying tonight, all the bills, that does get finished. And there is, I can't make a detailed explanation, but I try to do a short little reference of what it might be that it's okay. going to just for information. Thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for your interest. Okay. Uh, moving on then, that brings us to public comments. Uh, a person for the public can express concerns and they will be timed for three minutes. Is there anyone that would like to uh, have any concerns or air any concerns? Okay, moving right on. Number 11, change of order, and that would be uh, Dana, KLJ, and Tim. Welcome back, Tim. Well, thank you. Thank you for having us. I think I get that one tonight, actually. So um, maybe a quick update on that project to kind of lead into that change order. Todd with TDM, we have given him his notice to proceed, and he's uh, kind of has construction in the early phases underway. Uh, it sounds like I've been talking with Todd quite a bit. Materials are ordered. Um, he's mowing in some equipment, uh, done some mowing for gravel stock piling, uh, kind of getting things rolling on that first utility part of the project. 
Um, however, your actual action item for tonight is that change order, um, which was, a, I think it's a staple document uh, in those presents who brought along with us. So that change order is for the, the street, the road part of it, um, essentially the road paving, gravel surfacing, and would be an increase to that project. Of, you can see that $59,929 and 84 cents. These prices were coordinated with tobaccos through that change order. So that's still dealing with Kelly Avenue Correct. and it's the other portion of it because the first thing that you uh, we approved was the utility side and now this is the gravel street. street. Correct. And you make a, a good point, Mayor. This is just for the Kelly Avenue portion. So the yes. Gloria Street portion, the utility street, that part of it would follow in the, the next steps from there. Yeah, correct. We reviewed that pricing that Todd provided, and it's it's um, real good numbers in terms of what we've been seeing, and then even a little bit cheaper than what we've been seeing lately. So it's it's fair fair with its pricing. So I will tell you, it's great to see there's stakes in the ground with green flags on them, and stakes with orange flags, and there is windrows. What that um, on the the what was it that he hauled in gravel. Red Rock? Yeah, bedding, bedding around pipe. That's okay, so yes, that that all is in fact in place. So with that being said, do I, could um, we entertain a motion then to approve the change order to do the good part of Kelly Avenue? I'll make that motion. Okay. Second. Dan has moved, Mike has seconded. Any further discussion? What's Gerby? Gerby. Oh, it's just about taking out all the graphs and the okay, you brush and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's a short answer. He's correct. Oh, okay. I was like, uh, maybe it's in the <laughs> Thank you for asking that. I saw that too, and I wondered. I thought it must be my eyes. Get my eyes on. So, okay, motion made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Motion carries. Okay. That being, that, yep, that's all we had. I think the next thing on your item one is Echo. Yep, the Echo Valley sub. <laughs> Talk about that one a little bit. Do you want to go right into that? Yes, please. Absolutely. So uh, Echo Valley subdivision, the uh, the construction phase of that that we're, we're leading into, specifically the water, sewer, uh, road, gravel surfacing again, and then underground electrical as well. Um, we do have a bid opening set and scheduled for December 1st. So that's going to approach here pretty quickly. And then uh, ultimately, as we receive bids, anticipate receiving bids for that, excuse me, we would just coordinate with uh, likely staff and the mayor to get that scheduled into uh, council for your action tentatively at one of your December meetings. So, going to have that, have that schedule set as well. With that project, Dana did just mention here, and I think it's worth mentioning kind of a to-do on our end, we're coordinating through street names. Um, that, it sounds like that's a little bit of a tricky process to make sure we align with 911 addressing and that part of it too. So um, we'll, we'll keep working on that as well, kind of with that project. We, we got some names from Grady, but I don't think he settled on the ones that the county said were okay. So I'll, I'll coordinate back with Grady on that. And, make sure we got the ones he wants to use and get that back into the county. Okay, I might touch base on you that uh, with you on that part too. Okay, so what you're saying is that you have, have you put the, or you're asking for approval to put this out so contractors can bid this? Is that what you're saying? We, do, we don't need any action. It's an update. Um, that advertisement went out today. Okay. In, in the, um, County paper. Um, we brought a set of plans as well that Carolyn will have in her office. If anybody needs to stop by and look at it, it's there for public viewing. Uh, Garrett also has a set. Um, but we, we've sent the advertisement to roughly five contractors today. Right? So um, there's some interest already. So it'll be, yeah, I'll be curious to see what we get. Okay, so the word is out there. This is what um, we're basing that on, and 
the opening will be December 1st, 10 o'clock here. Correct. Correct. And okay. then your action will be on the bids when they come in. To accept that, yeah. the bid, the best bid. Correct. Okay. All right. So we don't have to do a thing with this tonight. Well, yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, um, we just have a few other items on our um, project update sheet. Um, next up is Industrial Park. Um, I talked to Underground today. They're, they haven't heard anything from on the plus side. So. Okay. So is, is every I guess, transformer box <laughs> at every lot line, is that going to have power to it? Is that your understanding? I think so, yeah. I can find out. Um, and then next step will be you planning, planning it, right? Okay. Uh, Fourth Avenue, we're doing just a little bit of design there right now. We're we're actually fairly final on that project. Um, not fully final, but we have a lot of things final. Um, but with that, we're taking sort of a backseat to some of the others. We put that one on hold just a little bit for that. Design wise, what we kind of work through Kelly and. Now we are getting a few potholes on that road. What are we going to do? Did you come in that way? Did you notice those? I did, but I, I drove on the other side of the potholes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get them on the way out. Okay. Um, any questions on that one? Okay. Uh, we talked about Hanson and Kelly Adam. Um, 21. 2021 street improvements. Um, last time we were at council, we left it, but we were, we as a KLJ were going to contact some landscape contractors to try to get somebody to come and put some additional topsoil reseed in uh, Linda's yard, Kelsey's yard. Um, Tim has an update on that. I did get in touch with a, a reputable landscaping contractor out of Rapid. Uh, area today um, and, and got a little bit of a bite on the hook, I think. So we're going to get him some more information, some photos, um, some kind of details on what we're looking at and, and keep working through that process with him and, and hopefully get him over here to, to do some planning up there. Okay, perfect. And, and our thought on that is we would have them invoice the city and then we just deduct that from Simon's final payout is the thought on that. Uh, that, that gives that landscape contractor reassurance that they're going to get paid and they'll be more willing to put the coming hearings. Okay, good idea. Um, and then uh, Garrett and I are going to get together next week to do a couple things um, video, photo, the curb and gutter that, you know, it's not quite to the standard we'd like it to, but we're going to then work through a deduct on the final payout. Um, so Garrett and I still still need to get together a little bit on that and kind of work through that. So that once we get all those invoices and stuff, we can then have the final you know. Okay. Anything Does anyone else? have any other questions, concerns, thoughts? Yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. You. Safe travels back to Rapid City. Okay. Chamber director. I am giving oh report for uh, for Kels. Okay. Um she just too much with the new one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um just if people do not know, um uh, Kelsey had her baby on October twenty-first and his little girl, Palmer Jean. That was the first. And then she the community craft show will be held this Saturday in the community safe center. Over 25 vendors will be in attendance offering a wide variety of products. The WOW FCCLA chapter will be providing concessions at the craft show. Also, they'll have uh, the Quinn VFW will be hosting Turkey Bingo in this room from 1 to 3. And Carla Brooklocker. Brooke Walker's music students will provide entertainment from 1 to 3, also on Saturday. And in conjunction with craft craft show, the chamber has organized, oh, and I forgot to look that up, uh, organized a fall crazy day shopping event. Um, there are 
certain businesses downtown that have um, that are going to have sales, special hours, treats, and more, and just it's just going to provide a great weekend of shopping and while to help community community members kick off their holiday shop. Um, also, she has the Chamber Holiday Sweepstakes will begin on November 16th and run until January 2nd. As a reminder, the Chamber Holiday Sweepstakes encourages community members to shop and buy locally by offering wall bucks as prizes. A total of $2,600 in prizes will be giving, given through the Chamber Holiday Sweepstakes. And the prize drawing will be held January 4th via Facebook Live video. And then the other um, note is that Chamber's annual pancake supper will be held on Wednesday, December 7th at the drugstore, Wall Drug, from 5 to 6.30 p.m. with Santa. Perfect. Santa's going to be there. I didn't think we're going to think about Christmas already. Haven't ate turkey yet, but yep. thank you, Kelly, for uh, yep. filling us in on the chamber. Okay, Economic Development Director, please. Good evening. Creative Lights will be Thursday, December 1st, starting at 6 p.m. And on that note, I'm requesting that we close Main Street that evening, as we've done in the past, to pull floats up and have the judges take a closer look at them. Is that the same night as our city council meeting? No, that's changed to the fifth, I think, wasn't it? Well, I have it down. Yeah, we're oh, about about that's it. over here. Right, sorry. And yeah, after reviewing the school events calendar, December 1st was really the only night we could incorporate, make sure students and a majority of community members were able to make it. So, and this has happened in the past. We Moved it before. Sure. So, so do you need consensus or a motion? And I will add to that, I talked with Sergeant Harkins and he and his deputies are willing to help with traffic control. So. Well, a motion to let block the street and then later on in the agenda you will approve the motion or approve by a motion to change the meeting. Okay. I'll make the motion to close the streets. Second. Okay, it's been moved to second and close the street December 1st for the Parade of Lights. Any further discussion? All those, oh, oh I'm just, I know um, Lily has, haven't you turned the lights? You went to the switch and turned it off or is that okay then? And that that doesn't need a motion, okay. Well, that's good to know that you did that. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Okay. Thank you. And if you'd like to have a float or a vehicle, just let me know and we'll get you registered. So all those in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed? Okay. So, okay. And um, Kelly, before you step away, just as another note, if our video actually works, where can people find it on the on our website? How do you how do you find where that video might be watched for the city council meetings for the city we council typically meetings. post them on youtube the city of wall has a youtube page and if you just put city of wall 11 3 22 city council meeting you should be able to find it and then we post it on the city of wall facebook page and then it's also on the city of wall website on the home page if you scroll down is where those are able to be accessed what happened with the last uh video is we used the public city laptop it's a little older it needs updates um so i think that's where the issue is so we have the video we've tried to download it onto a usb drive and upload it to a different computer and youtube still tells us the video is too long so if you want to watch it you can come in and watch it on that computer but <laughs> in the meantime we'll continue to try and get it uploaded but okay thank you those are where you can find it yes all right so plenty Thank of options you if you can pick one. So I'm wondering when Kelly's Christmas decorations are going up. When my sister gets here. <laughs> <laughs>
Because you got a whole bunch last year, didn't you? A new um, tree? We don't have a tree yet. No. Oh. Well, you should have a Christmas float. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jared and I work together and we'll put those very soon. <laughs> We're going to wait for Thanksgiving <laughs> for heaven's sakes. <laughs> Good idea. Good idea. Okay. So they started no. the I know. <laughs> it's crazy. Okay, that moves us to item 15 then. Second reading of the ordinance 2204. And you have that in front of you. Uh, it's especially timely because, well, one of the things we've gone with the 80%, this will be the second reading of this, but it also implements the, um, the uh, regulation that an applicant for a uh, permit, license. alcohol, liquor license. liquor license has got to provide us with a uh, definite uh, proof of $1 million of liability insurance coverage. So that's why this particular uh, ordinance is extremely important. So is there either a motion to adopt or is there any further comments? Well, I would just comment that after this, if you guys approve the second reading, I will then be sending letters out to these liquor license holders that you will be approving tonight and letting them know that this ordinance is now in effect and they will need to submit their insurance coverage to me and they won't get their license until I receive it because these licenses come to the city. I then send them on out to the liquor license holders. So I'll, I get that proof. It's not the license. They come from the state to you and you deliver them to the applicants. Okay. So, any is there a motion to approve or any further discussion or questions? I'll make them. Motion to approve the second reading of Ordinance 22 04. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Dan has moved. Kelly has seconded uh, to approve Ordinance 22 04, second reading. Any further discussion? Is this for the condition? This is for the conditional use permit. Is it? it is too. It is. It is the daycare, hair salons, short term rentals, Airbnb and any business collecting uh, revenue for services. I'm sorry, I just have the requirement of the million dollar coverage. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and we've this, gone with 80%. With 80% and um, how many, how are you determining the signatures? Like how many of- uh, It's 100 feet. 100 feet. Uh, may I discuss some on that before you guys do pass the vote? Yes. Okay. Um, so has anybody actually even looked at like what 100 feet looks like um, from a property? Like even take some of our most recent um, conditional use permits and track out what 100 feet would be like for that. Has anybody looked at what 100 feet is? For well, we discussed last week and it was two, some, didn't you say it was two properties? So. It, it all depends on, so are you going from the center of the place or the diameter of the property or the, the perimeter of the property? Property line. Property line. So from the property line. Um, so like on a salon that you guys just recently um, approved, it had five signatures on it, um, and which, I mean, that's good. Um, but with this new ordinance, if you guys would look at the 100 feet radius around the property line, they would actually need 11 to do this. So that's just a lot more paperwork um, for that. Uh, for a mercantile place that you guys voted in, they had five signatures. Go around with your new ordinance, they would need 13 signatures to go around. Um, I feel that there's a more common sense way to do this for, um, for signature wise. Um, more uniform, which I do feel that this ordinance did very much need cleaned up because there's some um, conditional use permits that you guys signed off on that had zero signatures. And with this new ordinance, it would require like seven 
Um, I do feel that yes, there needs to be input around, but it just needs to be more uniform. And I feel 100 feet is not a good way to go about it because if someone does, you're arranging anywhere from 15 signatures to zero signatures because there are places in town that are surrounded by no residential is just one residential place. So they would be covered and some only need one, some only need two. Um, but then you get into the more congested area, you need 13 surrounded by you. So like if you did more uniform saying like a max of eight signatures and just look at the people in front of them, the people in Kitty Corner, the people side to them, just like on the compass, north, northwest, or northeast, east, southeast, south, just have eight people have to sign on it to just keep it more uniform. And like, and there will be some conditions where only one person needs to sign for a conditional use permit or two people or zero. It just depends on where you live. And where, where would you get 13 properties if, within 100 feet of those? See, and then how are you going to determine where 100 feet is? Are you going to have to have people go survey where it is? Because if you go on Google Maps, like that's how I would look. Yeah, but I mean, if, if your lot's 75 foot wide or 50 foot wide, that's two lots away. So there's there's two property owners. You've got two property owners on the other side. That's four signatures there. You got two across the street and two behind you. That's That's eight. Properties within 100 feet. Some properties are closer together too, so you'll have some on the other side that you'll have to collect to point around. Because if you if you look at 100 feet, like and I just do Google Maps, and that's probably not very accurate, but it's like some guidance of what it looks like. And so then that's where you get down. Well, you have to do 100 feet. Well, where's the 100? Where's the 100 feet at? And you guys figure it out, and then boy, well, you. Need, you need these signatures. So that's why I feel just keep a uniform deal of eight people. I, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of okay with the 100 feet, and I'm confused by what Zach's saying. I understand the 100 feet. Because you just go to the property line, and you, you have a, a certain number, and you need a percent. What was, what was 90%? That was, shoot. One person can deny it as well. No, as no, I don't. <laughs> any business that revenue is collected for services. I think shouldn't that be eighty also? I think that was maybe a, just missed yeah. number oh. D. Yeah, I see. No, I didn't get it changed. Yeah, so. right. You're correct, Kelly, about that. Thank you. But so, who's going to have to survey where the hundred feet at? We're just going on the honor system of yeah, that looks like a hundred feet, and. So someone's 95 feet, but they're like, no, that's 100 feet. The, or would you not just do a 100, 100 foot radius from the center of the property they're looking to do the? We're going, we're going from the property line. And, but have any of you looked at that, like what it looks like? <clears throat> because you would be surprised. Okay, oh, I think I, 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 I all what I'm saying now. So if you're going from the property, you've got a 75 foot piece of property. Your house is after be the front, you know, on the street side, and you've got 50 feet behind your house, and then you go to that property line, you're going 100 feet from there. So now you're going, you're you're going another 100 feet back, and if you might actually grab two properties, you must be grabbing two properties one direction somewhere mm -hmm. to do that. Where you would need four, like on a back alley with this new orient of a heartbeat. If you did the eight, you would only need the three. If I'm sorry if I lost you there with the compass. But um, it's it's eight it's points. It's not the first time. <laughs> it's, it's eight points is what I'm going for. Is straight in front of you, kitty corner from you, side to you, kitty corner again, straight back, kitty corner, side, kitty corner. That's eight points. So that's eight signatures that you would have to do. Instead of having to go on the other side of your neighbor and ask for that signature as well. Because if someone's got a narrow lot, you're going to grab the lot behind that lot is what it's saying. And probably both sides. Yeah. I, I wonder I wonder if you went from the center of the property 100 feet. Then you probably need like four signatures if you oh, went to the center. So that's of the not good. 
You know, I, I bet you'd still need eight. I bet that would grab your compass, the center of, generally speaking, I you went from the center of the property. And can't you just do that on a map? Just yeah. See, like our, our lot up there, where the night like human dairies, we're our lot 75 foot wide, 150 foot deep. So, I mean, 100 foot, I'm only going to get four properties. Well, what, if yeah. your, what if your lot was turned the other way? And you did have if you have Dakota Mill and then city property across from you. But there'd still only be, if, if those were the same size as my lot, there'd be, you still only get, well, there's two smaller yeah. lots. We'd, we'd have nine properties because there's one lot split in half behind us across the alley. But then you take the alleys 15 feet wide, so that's cutting you back to 85 feet going across the alley. And if you had eight and you only so needed 80 percent, then how many do you need? If you had eight properties, 80 percent, you bought six. You would need 6.4. Yeah. yeah. Well, where are you going to find that 24? Mm -hmm. Very confusing. Yeah. Sometimes I'll look at it. Is it the first name and not the last name? Is that correct? 6.4. Mm -hmm. You drop it to 6. Then. <laughs> well, I don't know. Why don't Why don't we go go to the the hundred feet and and uh, uh, I think that from the property line and that includes more and and uh, uh, we can have Garrett look into it and and if we need to adjust the footage, uh, uh, you know, what are we shooting for? Eight to ten. We really want to get the people that are are close to the property. That would surely do that. That would be eight. That's why I like keep it uniform to where you do have those smaller lots that would like. And I'm not saying that everybody don't go out and get conditional use permit, but I'm just saying like the to be more uniform on the number of signatures and not do a over overwhelming signature for more burden of paperwork and so if you put like a mat maximum of eight or maximum of six so using this foot radius with it with the eight signatures or with a maximum of eight yeah uh, uh, that sounds so we just add maximum maximum of eight because that's of clearly going to cover your direct uh, yeah. up here yeah. your adjacent properties you yeah. know Okay, can we do that? Add that? And but are we okay? Or but we... it, but it, no. If if the lot's 150 feet like Dan's, and you're in the center of that lot, you still... go to the front. You're not making it across the street. I don't. I think that's flawed. Maybe you're we not should... doing. You're not doing 100 feet from the front, or it's like you're keeping it with. with oh, we're with, with, with. Oh, oh, yeah. okay, yeah. okay, good. Yeah, with and the, with the. Maximum of eight signatures required. Oh, okay, okay, good. Thank you. Okay, so how? What does that do for us, Carolyn? Then on this, looks like muddy water. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, and, and how? And if we're if we're going with a maximum of six, how are we hitting our percentage? Maximum of eight. eight. Maximum of eight. You gotta get your six more. Get rid of your percent. So basically, you so, have to so have you have to get 100% then? Is... No, we still kind of need the percentage. We need that. We need 80%. a percentage, but yeah. Because otherwise, you only had, you almost have to be 75. I like killing the 75 last meeting. That's all I'm going to say. 75 sounds pretty good. I was just trying to deal with your 13, so we didn't have to go get 13 signatures. Yeah. I was trying to get that backed out of there. Yeah. And if it's 80% and there's only three people around you, yeah. You know, then that eight doesn't apply because that doesn't work with the 80%. What about giving up for our state legislator of two thirds? And then ultimately, you guys have the decision at the end. So if you do two thirds, um, you have six neighbors, four of the six have to sign. If you have three neighbors, two of the three have to sign. And if you have eight, then you can do. What would that be? So now I, you want to do I, 66%? Is that what you're saying? Two thirds, yeah, 66. 
<laughs> or majority of 51, I'm just kidding. Not, not 51. <laughs> but just like if you're like saying a maximum of eight, you know, but if and if the majority of people only have six people around them, you know, you don't really want to give that option of the one person denying it. If there's only six, you still have to have 80%. 80% of the six. 80% of six. So we leave that 80% in there. Four. Okay. Four? Okay. Yeah. But yeah, if you get down to there, can you do, like, like, if there's three people, can you do it? Like, uh, that might get pretty wider. Like, you have a percentage for them of two thirds. Because, yeah, that's three. I, I think we should stick with the 100 feet and the 80 percent and kind of sort it out. I don't, I don't think it's I think it's, think it's doable. Because where are we at? If we change this word, add this wording, are we back to the first reading then, Carolyn? Are we still second, or can we still publish? It's only we can still publish if I understand the actually how we want this to read though I'm getting so much stuff thrown at me I don't know how you actually want to read and I don't feel comfortable just saying yeah go with it <laughs> so it's only when we're dealing with actual dollars if you make like in the budget and you make a large change then you have to go back with the first read but okay on this one you need to so you would require 80 percent within a hundred foot of the perimeter with a maximum of eight signatures. Take the eight out of there. Because that's not gonna work. Well if, 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 if it says maximum, we're not asking eight, but if there, it's a he's pointing out there's a situation where you could have like 13 people so I'm trying to get it away from 13 and just make it a max. But if all the neighbors you have is four, you just. But if we got the thir 13, four. eight signatures isn't is an 80%. But in previous no. conditional use permits, you guys have only had five, six, zero people sign off. So why do we have to try and bump it up to a 13 having to do it? Why not just do it uniform? Or is it 80%, 80% or max of eight? I, I think the aid is not good if we're going with 100 feet from the property line. How many signature or how many conditional use permits in the last year have you had that have had over eight? But but I, I mean we're going a percentage. So if you you got your house and you're put, putting a slot in it, you know it's pretty easy to to figure 100 feet around. I, I mean I don't think it's that complicated. I think it's doable, but I think uh, the maximum of eight signatures makes it not work. My opinion is that we, we've worked on this long enough that we leave it like it is. And if it, we run into a lot of problems, then we deal with it at that time and move ahead with the second reading. Okay. Thank you, Stan. Does everybody agree with that? I agree. Okay. Did we have a motion? Is there a motion on yeah, the table? This was discussion. <laughs> okay, and this was discussion. Okay, so I have I'm a question about the short term rentals. Do we have a definition on what that is? So some some people have rental contracts that are month to month. Is that considered a short term rental? What about employers that employ have homes for um, their employees? Is that a short term rental? Is it, if somebody just wants to you know, live there for I, a few months at a time, like what's a short term rental? I, I, I thought a short term rental was like a few days, a week, a couple of weeks. That's what I thought. I don't know that we defined it, but. I thought it was like if you had a teacher and they were going to be there nine months. That's a short-term rental. That's a short-term rental because I thought that was maybe even one that we had approved. What's other people's thoughts or opinion? Is there so there is an ordinance on that then? No, that's part of this ordinance. Oh. Short-term short to me is not nine. <clears throat> Excuse me, nine. Short-term would be like 
anything under a month. Yeah. If you're yeah. renting something by the month, that's not short term. Yeah, most of most apartments are most of the time. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean you get you get seasonal park employees. They come in here and rent for three months or six yeah. months and move. You know, so that's not a short term. On Gov OS, the okay. definition that they have on there, a short term rental is typically defined as a rental of any residential home unit or uh, accessory building for a short period of time. This generally includes stays less than a month or 30 days, but the maximum length can vary depending on the state and jurisdiction in which the rental is located. Such rentals are also sometimes referred to as transient rentals. Ooh, vacation that's rentals. Nice, that's that's a nice term. term. Short term that's vacation nice. rentals. Let's advertise that. Huh? <laughs> Resort dwelling units. So the answer to the question, like, what is a short-term rental, may include terms like these, depending on the location, agency, or organization in which you are dealing. I just wonder if the city would want to define that, what a short-term rental is. Yeah, and I'm sorry, but if you guys leave it the same of, like, how it is written right now, then you guys are just discouraging people that want to start a business and to end their deal because you guys have let or, or um, conditional use permits with lesser signatures go that should have had more signatures and now you're putting a beat restriction on it to require more and that's just more of a burden on I'm sure the city office, finance office and on the person trying to get their business going as well. That's why we're doing it now is to clean up the muddiness. Yep. You know, so in the past, we may have. You know, that's grand. Those are grandfathered in. This is our starting point moving forward. So, so that's, but you guys are compensating for doing these less signatures by bumping it up to over or damn near double, triple of what? Well, we were, we're right. probably wrong in the ones but before. This doesn't have anything to do with how. Yeah. We, what we approved the past. This is well, no moving forward. But, yeah, moving forward. But I'm just saying it should be a more common sense looking deal. You know, and we've got you know <clears throat> five years ago, how many conditional use permits did we have compared to what we have now? We probably double or more now of what we used to have. And so we're getting more and more of them. You've got to address it. Address it, you know, so how I mean if you're gonna if you make it too I mean People aren't going to want them every other house on the block. Yeah, Somebody can, running the business. So yeah. we're we're at the point on this. We don't have a motion. No, we do. No, we do. Who we made the motion? Okay. Dan, did we get a second? I'll second it. No, we do have a second. Who, who seconded? Dan made the motion. Kelly made the second. Sorry, yeah, Kelly. That's what I thought, Kelly. Okay, so. Is there any further discussion then on part of the council? Then Mike stands it. We can always readdress it if it gets right. to be an we issue. Figure can out I, this can I ask a question about the liability insurance in this part of the ordinance too? Oh, really it, so this ordinance addresses businesses, which also includes businesses that hold the liquor license. So it's all included in this one ordinance. And okay. they wanted to amend it all. So I mean, we're just doing so it all under one condition. Or no, not correctly. But the state of South Dakota, are they the ones that are saying that a Airbnb needs to carry a thousand dollar liability insurance? Really? No. Because that's what we have here is in number five under C. Well, if it's an Airbnb and, it, and they register with the Airbnb, how I understand it is they are automatically covered for a million. Two million. Two million. Two million. So, so a million will cover it. Okay. Any other comments? I'm going to call the question. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you, Stan.
Okay, motion carries then. All right. Item 16, which is dealing with another ordinance, um, 2205. And this is to repeal the. I'm minutes. sorry. Can, oh. With Manny's. Uh, uh, the short term rental, should we um, clarify it and say a short term rental, parentheses, anything less than a month? Put it in there in the ordinance so we know what that is, so people know what a short term rental is. You know, when we were doing our I think the state classifies short term rental 27 days or less, 20, 27 or 28 days or less. So when we were doing it, we were advised that there'd be additional documentation if we rented for less than yeah, 28 if, days. If it's less than 28 days, you have to collect sales tax and, and all that. If it's less than that, if it's over that, you don't have to collect sales tax on it. So that, that's the state when we did research about a year and a half ago on it. I just think that everybody has a different idea of what a short term rental yeah. is. Rick thought it was a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks, very right? nine, nine months. Nine months. To me, a short term rental is anything less than 30 days, but I mean, if it's. Yeah, I think just uh, Yeah, so you said that and then we got to talking and then got, got But I don't you think maybe we should put that in that? Uh, ordinance because just to it, clarify it a little better with our Airbnb and short term rentals. So, we're going to use the terminology that Mike found then? No, I, I think we should do the days. What was it, Mandy? 28? I think, you know, it's been about a year and a half, but I feel like it, it mirrors the February 28 days. Yeah. Like, if it was 28 days or less, then you had to. Do some additional documentation and you can call the state state uh i just had this conversation with state sales tax people not that long ago yeah, if you call the state sales tax office they'll tell you what a short term rental is well if we went with 27 days we didn't even take in february 28 days february 20, right i mean 28 days are month. well okay but wouldn't february be a monthly rental I mean, are, are we it trying to choose that, under that? Meet the, like, if, like, leap year doesn't, that wouldn't, if all you rented was that month on leap year, like, it would not be the state regulations of going from sales tax. I would, I would call the Department of Revenue in South Dakota and I would actually determine what a short term rental is. And I would use those dates. Yeah, that's probably. Yeah, we, we should maybe look into that. Okay. And we Just can. There, there, is, there is a classification of the state on the short term rental. Because we've already voted on that right. ordinance. Already. Let's address that and then yeah. 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 Right. So we'll, we'll either uh, amend or put it in our minutes or something. Which, you if know, you'll it'll accept. have to go to two readings again if you amend it again. Yes. Yeah. Every time you make an amendment to an ordinance, it has to have two readings. Maybe we, maybe we, maybe we can just define short term uh, rental and have it in our minutes, and then we have a definition. Can't? No, <laughs> it doesn't stand up. I mean, you can't go back and find those minutes every time you want the definition. Oh, okay. It has to be in the or It doesn't doesn't do any good. <laughs> well, that's fine. I'm just not sure if if at this time you need a short term rental, and I mean. Are you, you guys aren't really regulating the sales tax. It's the Department of Revenue that is. So I'm not really True. sure why the city needs to have that to myself. But okay, it's already, it's already I mean, there. It's the Department of Revenue that's going to determine based on. No, I'm, I'm just using that as an example. But if Mary thinks a short term rental is nine months and Rick thinks it's two weeks, I think it's 30 days. So somebody yeah, comes yeah. in here. Somebody comes in here and wants to do a conditional use report, and you have a short term rental. What is that? That's what I'm saying. Short term rental of is right. And they can determine at that time if, if that's what they want to classify it under. You know, I mean, we just want the states. 
and finding that eliminates like, well if, if the state revenue department already has it defined yeah, yeah that would override already us. there yep you're exactly right about that we, have, we we just say that the state says this is what it is and that's what we're following so then we have a definition yeah. perfect okay and you just need to find out that definition so they or know where to get it over there so, okay all right <laughs> all right moving on to ordinance 2205 this is uh, an ordinance that was discussed or brought up in the budget committee and it's the repealing the municipal property tax rebate it will grandfather in the three property owners who already are taking uh, are using this particular item but the budget committee felt that because of the infrastructure investments that the city is making it caused them to reevaluate this and this was also the ordinance that was supposed to be reviewed in five years so that's what they did and that's uh, the recommendation that they are making regarding the 2205. Is there any, uh, this would be the first reading for this ordinance. Is there any questions or concerns or comments? Back, back when we put this in, you know, it made sense and it was a good deal, but it was before we started putting tremendous amount of money into in infrastructure for properties so we could have <clears throat> lots and developments and affordable housing lots and and so we feel that it'd be prudent for us to sunset this take it out we're, we're doing a lot uh, for residential development okay any other comments Would I have a motion to approve then? So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to repeal uh, 1712070 municipal property tax, grandfathering in the three owners that are that are presently getting rebates. Uh, any further discussion? <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> okay, it's our first reading. Okay, the next resolution that was also uh, brought forward was to, in regard to the implementation, implementation of our discretionary formula. And as you read through this, uh, we did have on, uh, what it has done is to limit this discretionary formula for the development in the industrial park. Encourage Sorry. construction in the industrial park. We'd like to see businesses go there. We have a tremendous investment uh, from the city and the Economic Development Corporation. I think we should do this. I think it'd be, and I think it, it'd it be a good incentive. Would you like to make that a motion? I would. Okay, Rick has moved. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, Mike has seconded. Any further discussion? Okay, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Okay, that leads us to the first reading of the 22 supplement budget. First reading of the supplemental for the 2022 budget ordinance. And it's a sheet like this, the one that we're looking at. Carolyn has made notations or comments in each category. And what we're supplementing is um, the area of the pool, the community center, uh, chamber, fire, library. <laughs> Okay, is there any further comments or um, 
explanation, Carolyn, that you want to share? Well, I made reference to reasons why some of these were went over by which um so I guess if you guys have questions, but they were they're all things you were aware of, I guess. Is there a particular one you're not understanding by what I was commenting? Does anyone have any questions? You have it on your printout too, Mike. Yeah, no, he does. Oh, he doesn't. But it's in our Yeah, it's on your. It's on our iPad. Oh, sorry. Trying to get the G, Mary. But that's trying to get me the G. Do you want to look at the paper? <laughs> Okay, now that we um, know what it looks like, does anyone have any questions or comments or concerns? We're supplementing the 2022 budget. Is that a motion? That's fine. Okay, Mike is moving. Um, <clears throat> that this would be uh, approved uh, supplemental budget. Second. Okay, Dan has seconded. Any other questions or concerns? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Okay, motion carries. Okay. Now that brings us to the 2023 motion, our 2023 budget ordinance. And everybody does have a copy of that. That is this multiple page legal size document. We distributed that at the last meeting. The budget committee spent quite a lot of time on this, fine tuning and tweaking. Uh, I know that Stan isn't maybe able to communicate or if you were on that budget committee, is there anything you want to add? Well, or Carolyn, do you want to? Yeah, I'll, I'll start before uh, Carolyn and then she can clean up any mistakes they make. Um, I was really concerned at one point we were uh, over $5 million over our, re reg uh, our revenue and our budgeting process, which was really frightening. And uh, uh, Carolyn and the budget committee and, and Mayor Williams diligently worked on it. And now we've got it down to 1.573602, 1,572,602. 
over our revenue, which is just like, you know, doable. We, we, we can take care of that with uh, uh, cash on hand. Uh, it's a huge improvement on uh, over $5 million. We pushed 4th Avenue, uh, that construction project into 2024. We got, Mary, was it the county on board to uh, commit to using the 600,000? It actually was the state DOT. The state yeah. DOT. To allow us to. They would still give us that money in 2024. So I, I think we're in really good shape. And then we got a lot of stuff going on. I mean, we're, we're trying to uh, 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 fund a lot of residential projects and and uh, uh, and the uh, airport. At the airport. Rick, when you guys looked at the budget, were you guys taking consider, into consideration of the declining economy and uh, forecasting to be some sales tax revenue? Because I, as people continue to lose money out of their portfolios and everything, I believe, because we, we collect a lot of discretionary income at all. Is what we collect. That, I mean, do you guys talk about that at all in the budget meetings? And well, it's it's, and like it's certainly a concern. You know, we we uh, and, and and we're used to dealing with with that in the sense that you know last year uh, I, I believe it was a record breaker for sales tax revenue. Yep. Uh, this year didn't quite match up to that. We were concerned with the high gas prices uh, hurting business didn't actually happen. And, and so we're happy about that. So that you're right, that's something that, that we consider. And, and, and certainly with uh, what's been going on nationally, we have to be concerned about the co uh, economy. And uh, Carolyn, traditionally, historically, figures revenue low and expenses high. Okay. That's just how, how she uh, plugs things in. And so we certainly work with her in, in that same direction. But yeah, this economy thing is serious. What the feds are doing with the interest rate is serious. Um, it's a problem. It's a real problem. Voting uh, November 8th is important. Okay, anything else that needs to be asked or talked about on the budget council people? Is there any? I'd make a motion that we approve the first reading of the 2023 budget ordinance. Motion. Motion. Oh, Stan has made a motion to approve the 2023 uh, projected budget. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Very can second it uh, to approve the budget. Is there any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Okay. All right, that brings us to the liquor license applications. And those are listed on our agenda and they are grouped and we can consider each group as one. Uh, and we need a motion to approve the retail on sale liquor. Now, uh, uh, Mary, I will need to abstain from that because I, I don't want, I can't be voting for the wall drug liquor license. Exactly. And Do you have a requirement on how many days they have to offer this or anything? I mean, there's like there's opportunity here for no liquor sales. For what? No sales. Businesses Maybe. that aren't operating as a as a as of today. Do they have to sell liquor within so, so many days a year or have it available? The Department of Revenue considers a liquor license to be inactive if they do not sell at least 30 days out of the year. 
So they have to have list results for every case. And and you know, we've always maintained our liquor license, and so every February for the month, or there's a set time. We for thirty days uh, period. We we have a Jack and Coke special at Waldron. <laughs> Every, 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 I, you know, it, it's for the appropriate time. It's, you know, it's end of March or it's 30 days. And on this, there's um, three on sale liquor licenses and uh, Wall has four, correct? That they give out. Yeah. So mm -hmm. is there one that's. So I just this? did not get the application back yet. You haven't got the application yet? Right. So it's so, not on there until I get an application back. What happens if they do not turn in an application? So they can request again, and it will be treated as a new license. Um, and then, but it's not an inactive license. It's just has to be renewed as a new license. So the hearing will have to be published that, um, and it's not going to be, like said, considered an inactive license until two years passes where there's no activity on it. So there can only be three liquor licenses for the next two years if this one doesn't activate theirs. Yes. And nobody else can try and put in for that license that's not being used. Um. That I would be a question for the Department of Revenue because these licenses all go through them basically, and then the city approves the issuance of them. But I just have to work. My phone is just four. I have four businesses, so I just. Oh, yeah, mine only has three. So that's why. Did I you print through? Yeah, mm -hmm. I just pulled it up today and printed right. one. Off the chamber. I, I had it on there just in case it. Um, came in, but it did not come in. So at the end of the day, I took it up. That makes, sense. That makes a lot more sense. Going at the door. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and Stan, can you hear me? It, uh, did you, are you okay with voting on the golf course? All right, I was on mute. Yes, I can vote on the golf course. I am not on the board. Okay. All right, very good. All right, all those in favor of approving the three retail on sale liquors license as listed. Did you need a motion? We did. We did. Yeah. did I? <laughs> Let's back up. Okay, Dan is going to move. Mike. Mike moved. Yep. Who's seconding? Kelly. Kelly is seconded. Okay, three that are listed as retail on sale. Any further discussion? One quick question. Okay. So that's on line number 19. Correct. So should my motion also cover the package off sale or do we have a separate? You're doing okay. it on a separate. Okay. okay. Motion stands. All right. Any further questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. Aye. Okay. That has passed. That moves us now on to the package off sale liquor. There is two listed there. I move to approve the package off sale liquor. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded to approve Rosebell and uh, Corner Pantry. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Retail off sale one. And there is one license there for Red Rock under C9 Enterprises. Do I have a motion? So moved. Mike? And Kelly seconded it? Correct. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Moving on to retail on sale restaurant. And that's Badlands Saloon and Grills, Red Rock, 
So moved. Okay, Kelly has moved. Second. Dan seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so I was reading. <laughs> We're losing focus here. Okay. One quick question. So yes. what about the wine? Is that the same as this? This. The South, South Dakota. Dakota. No, okay. that is now a under the a malt beverage liquor license, and that is get renewed in June. Perfect. Thank you. Great question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Anything else, sir? All right. Uh, mayor's report. I wanted to report on the loan application update that we are making to South Dakota Housing uh, to help with Echo Valley infrastructure. I got a I submitted the loan, got seven questions back from that entity that uh, wanted to have it clarified or expanded on. So I have reached out to uh, the owners of Echo Valley in order to verify some things, get approval on a couple of items, items and just more clearly state the questions that the subsequent housing uh, committee had. And so I will be in the process of submitting that loan uh, in the next day or two because I just uh, yesterday got that, all of the, that information together. The other thing I wanted to report on today is the Elevate luncheon that I attended today, which was about the Ellsworth Air Force Base expansion. The commander of the uh, the base was there as well as the gentleman from uh, their housing. Let's see if I have that. Uh, the Ellsworth Authority organization was there to discuss. Lots of numbers, lots of information coming in uh, regarding uh, what their missions are, how what they're doing differently now, when the B1s. Uh, arrive, why they're called the Raider Group, but the thing that was most in interesting to me was they are building no housing on base. So all of the people they're bringing in, which will number in about the 4,000s of military, uh, need to find housing in the Rapid City, Black Hills region. And it was stated that airmen and their families want an affordable home with a yard as opposed to living in apartments. And so I visited with the gentleman from Ellsworth Authority, reminded him that Wall is out here, told them how many housing lots we're trying to put in right now, and uh, indicated that we would like to work with them and build a relationship. And he, it, even though he grew up in Rapid City, he was thinking of how airmen want to live in Sturgis, Spearfish, Hot Springs, uh, Hill City. And he said, you know what, Wall is not that far away. I reminded him of the great school we have here, the great football field, how we're building onto the school, and that we've got lots available. So we'll see what comes out with that. But... When I visit with Kelly, she'll be the one that will build that relationship. So that's all I have uh, to report for my mayor's report. And so, Carolyn, would you like to move into your portion? Yes. Um, one of the things um, that came about after conference, I believe I was not in on that session, but there was a lot of questions coming out on the listserv about putting an agenda item on every month or every meeting that states conflict of interest. And we actually do this at the school, at our school board meetings, that is on our agenda every month. As an example, um, where it could be used for would be, like tonight, um, if it was up under the consent agenda or just before the consent agenda, Rick could have stated at that time on that item, saying that he would have a conflict of interest under item 19 uh, with his liquor license approval. 
and rather than stating he's abstaining from that vote. People would just understand. I mean, I think everybody knows that Rick Houston is associated with Waldorf, but in years to come, people might not, and that would just correlate that back that he was he had abstained or he was noting a conflict of interest for that reason. So I just thought to follow up with those things, I would bring that up for you guys to see if that was something you would like to see added to the agenda as an item. Well, I'll also working out if I can ask with the, the school board. How long have you had it on there? Mm, I would say probably two years. Two years. Well, it's been on there because I had it been there Yeah, because when I was still there, oh, I would yeah. have to do fill <laughs> out a form um, that I, I don't remember exactly how it ran, but I had to yeah. fill one out if we bought tires or got oil changed at m, &M Sales because my, my son in law, which all just meant that I got prices from both places and I went where we got the best deal, but I had to state that that. Everybody knew that if I was saw they saw me down there that I had gotten close. Yeah, that sounds cool. And like we have had board members that have had a wife or a spouse, I shouldn't always say wife, but a spouse that's a teacher. And so they would fill that out saying that they have a conflict of interest during, you know, whatever, because of their spouse being a teacher. And that way it's just kind of more clear and and that yeah, so, provides clarity. Yeah. yeah, sounds good. So I would probably, you would just see that added on to the agenda, and that would be the reason if nobody has anything at that time. It just goes, just like the emergency, like how do we phrase that? Um, business for emergencies, it's on there. Right. You know, there's times we just don't have anything, so you need to just move on, you know. So do we have a consensus that that'd be okay to add? and? Okay. All right. And Thank you. Then um, last year, beginning in January of this year, I should say, but we started last year, um, when we were looking at putting in some infrastructure and getting some loans for that, we were unable to do that because of our water rates not being at the level that they needed to be. And so we had discussed that over a three year time frame, we would slowly start to increase those rates. So I just wanted to bring this forward to you guys. It's a resolution. It gets approved with just one reading. Um, so if you don't feel comfortable yet wanting to look at it again and have other questions with it, I'll bring it back at the next meeting if you still continue to want to go forward with rate increases. I just wanted to kind of have a discussion. But we we need to do this to qualify for loans and then and grants. And grants. And then another thing, we probably got in this situation because we didn't every year raise the rates a little bit. So now we're kind of playing catch up ball. But I, I think it's a good thing. It's we should move forward. So, I mean, you, it's on the agenda. You can approve it at this time, or you can ask me to bring it back for the next meeting. Would, would this bring us in line? We'd have one more year to bring it up, and then after So that, we're we moving in just, that direction. Yeah. I Last year, I gave you uh, a spreadsheet on what two years to get us there would look like, or three years, and you guys opted for the three years. And so that's the increase that I'm going with at this time as well. Yeah. So this is year two. It's in year two. And you just need consensus or a motion? No, this one I would need a motion. I made want a motion. Okay, Mike has moved. Second. And Kelly has seconded that we adopt resolution 2216 uh, to increase base water and sewer fee. And this would be not, this would not be effective until January of 2023. 2023. So people will see it on their bill that they receive and is payable by February 10th. Okay. So. Okay, any other discussion, questions, or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. And then this is the time of year that they give us our, um, look at our health insurance benefits and there is a 4% increase, um, which is, Pretty minimal 
And I did the calculation with the employees that are currently taking health insurance. And the increase would amount to, with all the employees included that are on that, a $2,600 increase. In Across the board? Across the board. Oh, so wow. It's pretty minimal, that's, you know, but I just wanted to share that awesome. with you. So there's no motion on this unless you made a motion to withdraw health insurance from the employees. <laughs> but otherwise, it's just something I want to share with oh, you. Very good. And then um, the next item is, so there was a question about um, whether motels can allow their visitors to have alcohol like at their pool or whatever. And I checked into the Department of Revenue on this and not without issuing them a liquor license. Um, people I know have alcohol in their room and they said that is, you're renting that room and so that's your private space. But to be out among the public, they would have to have a license for that. Another question came across of a possible uh, business that would maybe sell and the person interested would maybe want to add a video lottery into that business. Well, part of that, um, it requires an on-sale liquor license and the only on-sale liquor licenses that we would have available to issue for the motels or for a business that had a video lottery is the on off sale malt beverage and South Dakota farm wine. Currently, businesses that have that license, if they do not sell food, um, that off or that on sale is not allowed for them. So neither of these would be allowed unless you change the ordinance. So I just wanted to bring this forward to you, something to think about. And if you have further questions, I included our current our current ordinance on the video lottery, which I'm a little bit confused about. And I would recommend if you did decide to go forward with that one, that we give that to um, our attorney to review because I'm really confused by how it's worded. I don't really know what it means, to be honest with you. And if you even want to consider changing the ordinance to allow this one liquor license we have to be issued to other businesses that would not possibly have a food sale attached. So this is just an information item. You want to think about it and um, want me to put it back on the agenda for further discussion at the next meeting, let me know. Otherwise, I'll probably bring it back in another month and just see what you guys have put some thought into it. So, I guess, man, I think every hotel that I've ever been to that has a pool, it seems like people, I mean, they, the hotel has that requirement, like no glass and stuff like that. But is it really considered open container if it's on the motel private property? If you read the email from the Department of Revenue, oh, wait. they said that. <laughs> so, what's going to happen then at campers? Because they're only renting the spot, it's not a structure. No, that whole license is that is issued to the campgrounds covers the whole property, same way as it does the golf course. If they have, yeah, if they're issued a license, but they have to be issued a license. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, could a sheriff or a deputy pull up to Best Western and cite the people at the pool and have beer? Is that what you're saying? See, that is what I'm saying, and that is what the Department of Revenue also said. It wow. depends on if your law enforcement is going to enforce it. Sure, but they could. But they I mean, it's not them. on us. It's just, right. it, and I wouldn't have even questioned it if it hadn't been brought to my attention to find out how that works, you know, because. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, and I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So, do you want to mull this over for a month and have Carolyn bring it back? I can imagine we're the only one that's going to be kind of baffled by that one, but there is, I mean, that just then opens up a whole lot of other deals. So, I think we should probably hold off on it. 
Yeah, and I'm fine with it. I just yeah. wanted to. It's forced. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. interesting. But I don't know if you want me to do any more checking with the video lottery, if you want to do an exception to the ordinance that, you know, any video lottery would be allowed to have um, on sale without food attached. I mean, you could revise your like currently, the bars are the only ones that have it, and they have food. So, I don't know. I just wanted to <laughs> bring these things forward to you. Well, you were asked, and you're trying yeah. to respond. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I that's I, all which that's about. And that I just I probably won't move forward on any of it until. I'll give it a couple of minutes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, let somebody else get in trouble. Okay. Anything else then? On your that, list? that is all that I have. Oh, well, I was just want, I'm curious does a vending machine count as food? Because a lot of hotels and motels have vending machines that have candy bars and chips and whatnot. But they still have to be issued a license. So, I oh, mean, would that count? I mean, it, it's food. not looked at that way because like right now our convenience stores have those licenses, but I I can't remember how our ordinance reads it, but it's not intended to a convenience store or like restaurant type of food. Yes. Well and then initially they kind of screwed up with the mall. I, I think well, it was the mall they beverage. They, because they you can that. actually <laughs> consume it at Mm -hmm. The gas station, if you wanted to, because it That's was considered. What the license is. It was our ordinance that we didn't think we wanted to. And basically, this gives those convenience stores kind of a. If somebody says, Well, I know you have this license that's on sale, you can say, But we also have an ordinance that, and then it isn't on them to say, No, you can't drink in our establishment. <laughs> Could our hotels in town put a pool rental fee on there of a dollar so they're renting the pool for use and get around that? I, I don't know. I'm just saying, is there a workaround? Because I mean, it's, it's, there's got to be some. That's why I think like some silly workaround where that because you're actually paying to rent the pool when you're staying there. It's no different than renting the room. Yeah, I don't know. I guess, I mean, you know, this is it. I think if we wanted to push this farther, we would have to involve the attorney because when I reach out and ask questions in Department of Revenue, they're not going to give me any. Oh, oh no. no, you no, know, no, no. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I'm just, I'm just saying, yeah. if you right. rent your room and you can consume in your room, can you rent the pool? Yeah. I mean, I is, it, is it that simple versus you guys having to go issue? Uh, a beer license to our hotels. Right. So but the can... pool is part of the fee you pay to rent a hotel room to use the hotel room. The pools are part of that package. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, good. bring it back to us in a month and yeah. let us ponder that. Okay, anything else? That was all that I Okay, had. so. Here, first of all, update on our football team. Well, we're going to win. Okay. Yeah. And then how's the girls? Does anyone know? I haven't heard anything. Okay. So, you know, you scared me a little bit last Thursday, right? right? Everybody was a little worried. Okay. 5.30, right? What's that? 5.30 tomorrow? Yep, 5.30 tomorrow. Like I was explaining to the guys, they were all kind of nervous. When I was a senior, we won state. We won our, our second round by one point. The semifinal by two points. So I said it's be done. not always going to be win by 50. 45 points. So, no, and it actually, I, that was kind of made me nervous that they would actually get to bickering with each other, you know, that they allow some of the score, but actually they did a pretty good job of building each other up. And that, that goal line stand was something that was unbelievable. That was just like, whoa. Well, that, that was very impressive. Did a great job. Anyway, thank you for being a part of that program. Oh, well, thank you. I, I enjoy it. So, okay, so what would you like to talk about on the lights? Um, we've been having issues at the 110 and the 109. Um, the lights in between the interstate and 
before we kind of just had West River Electric do the maintenance on it, and I pretty much just changed the bulbs, and I think they're aging pretty good. So I talked to the maintenance lighting, and they drew up this contract, and they currently do it with the DOT. I can't remember. It was like Sturgis and Rapid City. They maintain the lights, and they have everything there that they would cover. Um, it's two hundred and eight dollars and ninety six cents a month. Um, and I think that would just, you know, West River Electric pretty much did it for free. And, and, and that's and lighting maintenance. Yeah. But they're really good. And they'll come down if we have an issue anytime you call. And I just think it free up West River to go do something else. And, and that, that, is, that isn't a big expense. No. No. And this just, but this covers the lamps or the light. If somebody knocks the pole down, that's a different deal. Right, yeah. And then we yeah, we pay for that anyways. We use them a couple times and so they come down. Okay. To the pole, so. Okay, so you're recommending that or you're asking if we would approve this agreement to hire starting November one and a, a period of sixty months. So that's a five month contract? Is that how five you year. I mean, geez. yeah, five year, 60 months, five years. Okay, five year contract for $208. So locking that in is kind of a good deal for that length of time. So does that, I mean, that obviously covers more than just changing the bulbs. Yeah, they come in and clean it. Um, I don't know. They won't be responsible for the condition of any wiring electrical equipment other within the light fixture itself. So it'll be in the fixture, but in the ground, it won't be covered. Because I remember who, I mean, even before, well, I know West River dealt with a lot of that, but didn't we have an agreement with who was that that we had was it the DOT that would because remember when we had to run underneath of the road mm -hmm. for, yeah. for lighting and stuff. Yeah. wiring yeah it was bad we have a, we have an agreement with the South Dakota DOT that we maintain those lights okay well, I would say it seems like it's a pretty good agreement then. Is that a motion, Mike? Yes, it is. Okay. Mike has moved that we uh, make uh, approve the contract for lighting maintenance with what is an lighting, lighting lighting maintenance company. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Mike and Dan have moved. Any further discussion? Yeah, what, I, one one quick question. How many lights are we talking about? I think there's like six, six, well, six poles. Yeah. And there's like three on eight. Like, yeah, them big tall ones. There's, there's eight, six or eight lights, six or eight poles on it. On each pole. Yeah. Okay, good. And it really, I mean, there was sometimes when some of those bulbs were out um, at the 110, and where that road bends slightly to the left, I mean, I saw a lot of brake lights <laughs> yeah. when that turn came up. I mean, 80 miles an hour is moving pretty quick. And if they don't have good lighting, it's not very safe. Okay. Okay, any further discussion? Okay. I'm going to call for the vote then. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Anything else, Dan, at this time, Karen? No, nope, just getting ready for winter and waiting some sewer. Very busy. Okay. Very good. We're staying on that. Okay. Are there any other items for discussion this evening? No action would be taken. Just a question. <clears throat> Does anybody else... Exactly where they're going. So I talked to someone and they were for the DOT and they were asked about it too. And they suggested they go right to the DOT to see if they can 
do more. Okay. Split a, a, a citizen went and talked to a person that works for the DOT here okay. in Wall, yeah. complained about it. So he told them, the citizen, to contact the office in Rapid City and file a claim complaint with them. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Any other items or questions? All right. Uh, the 24th item is that we move the December meeting to the 5th. What day would that be? A Monday. A Monday. And then the second, that would be the first meeting in December. And then looking at the calendar for... And the next meeting would be at the 15th and and want that moved to the 19th or 20th, Monday or Tuesday, Carol? Yes. Um, I think the 15th would just be too soon. Plus, I would have a conflict because that's when I have my health from the board meeting on the 14th and I'm back on the 15th. So that would kind of put a lot of pressure on me. Um, I was thinking the reason I had the 19th or the 20th I think the 19th is a school That's concert. That's what I was, was going to say. We better check the school calendar the here. The 20th doesn't look like any activities that I can see. Should we go to the 20th? Will that work for everybody? The 20th of December. Okay, we're on the discussion of the council meeting stand, moving the two December meetings first one to the 5th and the second to the 20th. What does that look like for you? You talking to me? <laughs> I am, well, yeah. Well, I got, I got uh, because the meeting is taking too long, I got cut out again, so I had to re-sign in. So I, I missed that part, sorry. Right. No, I understand. So yeah, we're looking at moving the first meeting in December to the 5th because of the conflict of the free lights. That's a Monday night. And then the second meeting uh, to the 20th because I believe there's Christmas concerts at school on the 19th, so. Yeah, I'll, yep, that'll be fine. So 5th and the 20th? That's what we're looking at, yes. Okay. We will hold our first meeting in December on the 5th, on Monday, and the 20th, which is a Tuesday, for the second meeting. Okay? And we would need a motion to make these changes. So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Our next city council member meeting has already been moved, and that will be November 17th. No. Oh, no, that's the regular time. Okay. okay. Next meeting is November 17th at 6.30. That being said, uh, can I have a motion to go into executive session? I'll make a motion. We go into executive session for the purpose of discussing legal personnel issues according to FDCL 1-25-2. Okay, is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Yeah. Thank you for being here for your comments, Sam. And great Halloween. Yeah, I heard lots effort. of good things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of good feedback, except you took all the kids trick or treating. There were, I guess, somebody said it was the volleyball game. I'm like, I don't buy that. <laughs> you want to go to the volleyball game with mom and dad, or do you want to go trick or treat? I doubt they picked that, but somebody said that uh, all of the, all of the kids were all hanging out over there. Yeah, for sure. That's yep. awesome. It was a lot of fun, though, for sure. Good. Cool. And you had a lot of help. Yeah, like yeah, a lot of volunteers. I mean, 